and the world as we knew it changed forever. Most of us will never forget where we were when we heard the tragic news that President John F. Kennedy had been assassinated. And in the last 27 years, the mystery of his murder has only deepened. Many experts who have studied the evidence agree Lee Harvey Oswald couldn't have acted alone. And now, as incredible as it sounds, one man claims to have pictures, pictures proving there was another assassin. Janet Rose has the inside story of what could be the most sinister cover-up in history. <laughs> A bright autumn sun and warm crowds embraced him that fateful day in Dallas. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, the 35th president of the United States. Movie star handsome at the peak of his popularity. Looking ahead to another campaign, another four years in the White House. But this tour through Texas would tragically be his last. An end to the Camelot dreams he symbolized. A sudden, startling, shattering final act to America's Age of Innocence. Parkland Hospital, the Hesda shooting. Parkland Hospital has been advised to stand by for a severe gunshot wound. An entire nation would watch and listen in shock and grief. John F. Kennedy died at approximately 1 o'clock Central Standard Time today here in Dallas. He died of gunshot wound in the brain. It was, they say, an open and shut case. The Warren Commission would officially conclude that this man pulled the trigger, that Lee Harvey Oswald was the lone assassin that gunned the president down. He's been shot. He's been shot. A bullet in his belly would silence Oswald forever. But the controversy lives on. The notion that the president was murdered by one gunman acting alone has fueled criticism and spawned an army of skeptics for over a quarter of a century. Unofficially, there seems to be little doubt that the assassination of JFK was the result of a conspiracy. Almost all of the evidence that has come forth from credible researchers would confirm it. But the questions that still linger concern who killed the president and why was he singled out on that particular day in Dallas? The images and names are forever etched in the recesses of our memories. The Texas School Book Depository, Dealey Plaza, the Grassy Knoll. But what about the Secret Service agents in the front seat of the Kennedy limousine? Who remembers Roy Kellerman and driver William Greer? His name is Lars Hansen. Two years ago, he produced a videotape which has rocked the assassination research community ever since. Kennedy's been shot in the throat. He's leaning to his left. The driver now begins to rotate. His left arm comes over his right shoulder, and he fires now. Again, you see the driver rotate. You see the weapon come into view. He's rotating again. The weapon is in view. He fires. You can clearly see his head turning and the, his arm and the weapon extending into view over his right shoulder. For a highly trained marksman, it would not have been obviously that difficult a shot. And if, especially if he was trained as a quick draw artist to make the maneuver quickly, he easily could have just turned around like this and fired right over there. It's not a gun. It's a man's head. Robert Groden is generally acknowledged as the world's leading expert on the assassination's photographic evidence. He is co-author of High Treason in which he offers evidence that the Kennedy autopsy photos were altered to cover up a conspiracy. Utilizing his own copy and state-of-the-art enlargements of the assassination film, Groden contends that what appears to be a 45 caliber nickel-plated automatic in the hands of Agent Greer is merely a reflection. This is what they are contending is the gun. Right. Here's the reflection of, of the shadow, the bottom of the shadow, on the top of the forehead. This is light reflected sunlight off the forehead. This is the top of uh, Kellerman's head. This is the top of Greer's head. Here's Greer's ear. So you don't buy this chauffeur, Secret Service agent, turning around and firing a gun at Kennedy? No way in the world. It's pure disinformation. It's got to be disinformation. No one in their right mind could believe that. He says he can prove that Bill Greer didn't shoot anybody, didn't shoot Kenny then. I don't know how you can prove he didn't. Fred Newcomb and Perry Adams believe the fatal shots came from the front seat and spent five years of their lives writing this as yet unpublished manuscript to prove their theory. What I see when I watch the film is the move, the body movement, the body language of, of Greer. He turns around and it looks like he has something in his hand. 
and just that incident, the president's head explodes. And the timing is just beautiful. I'm convinced he was shot from inside the limousine. Let's put it that way. Uh, the, it, it was kind of a portable crime scene. So the shot came from within there. These people have no idea what fact is. And most of them don't have any idea how to conduct research. Uh, they, they live fairy tales. Harold Weisberg has investigated the assassination for 25 years and is considered among the most respected independent researchers on the subject. William Greer did not fire anything at the president and furthermore couldn't have. Because? Because it was a physical impossibility. He had his hands on the steering wheel and the car never stopped moving. It was a very rush job. We never intended to sell this. We never intended to distribute it. So uh, we weren't concerned with that aspect of it, but rather just being able to clearly see the movements of the principal people involved in the limousine. There were a dozen people within 20 feet of the car at that point. They've all testified what they saw. They all say the shots came from the front, but none of them said that Greer fired the shot. It's ridiculous. A witness said, I thought I saw a firecracker go off in the limousine. Another one said, I saw guns in the hands of the Secret Service agents in the limousine. I can't believe that anybody in their right mind would believe this story, but they're promoting it. So they're either doing it for personal gain or they're doing it for, um, for the purpose of, uh, of, of disinformation. Illusion versus reality, conspiracies and cover-ups, lies and distortions. So many years after those bleak November days, all we're left with are tapes and theories. There's a possibility the Secret Service or some element of the Secret Service might, might have been involved. But to make that assumption rely on Bill Greer shooting the president is asinine. I think the president was killed as the end product of a conspiracy. I think those who benefited most were those who wanted a different president. And those who knew that Lyndon Johnson would be a hawk when John Kennedy was a dove. Will it ever be resolved? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. Clearly, most of them agree there was some kind of conspiracy, though they don't agree on Greer's role. What does Secret Service agent Greer have to say about all this? We'll never know. He died of cancer in 1985. Coming up on Inside Report, they're video vampires who spend their nights stalking news and sometimes get lucky.